Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to conduct lecture number 43 of our course and the topic of this lecture is serial asynchronous transmission. So let's start our topic. So in this lecture we will learn how one can actually write code for a semi language code for serial asynchronous transmission for PIC 18F microcontroller. We will we will not only be writing steps to require it, but also write a code side by side. So let's uh, see what is our first step and what is its relevant code. So the very first uh, step is of transmitter code is basically loading the value 20 hacks into transmitter, transmitter status and control register. We have already discussed this register transmitter uh, status and control and we know that when we feed 20 hacks into this register that means we are configuring uh, serial asynchronous transmission and uh, we are uh, actually uh, loading uh, for 8-bit uh, transmission we are not con con considering any ninth bit of information uh, we are not uh, considering any error rates right so we if we feed 20 hacks into transmitter status register that means we are configuring it serial asynchronous transmission of 8 bit only right so how one can do it it's very simple uh, move literal to working 20 hacks into uh, working register and then we have to move that working register into transmitter status register that's it uh, in this step after it next step is to make tx spin uh which is basically uh, port c pin and the pin number is rc6 right we have to pick, make make that pin as output pin because we are going to transmit so information is going to go out from the device so that means you have to declare that pin as output pin so to declare any pin output pin what we do uh, b c f press C, remember, and which pin we are interested in transmit pin. You can simply write RC6 as well. It is also correct, but to uh, um, to declare it that we are dealing with transmitter, you can simply write TX as well. So you can also write in this fashion, right? That is the second step. Let's go to the next step. So the next step is to calculate the value of SPBRG and load it. And to calculate the value of SPBRG, you know that our formula will be used. Uh, frequency of oscillator we will require, and we need to decide the baud rate at which we want to transmit certain values serially in asynchronous mode. So here we have to assume two values. Let's say we assume FOCS, uh, which is given to us is four megahertz. And uh, uh, the baud rate we are interested here is 2400 bits per second. So we will evaluate this value. And once we gonna calculate it, the value of this X will become equal to 25.04, which can be simply approximated as 25 in decimal, right? Uh, so this is 25 in decimal value, right? So what I have to do, I have to load this value inside the, uh, inside the SPBRG register. Remember four megahertz is used here, four into 10 power six and 2400 bits per second is used here, 2400 will be used and the formula evaluated value is 25.05 and we have approximated is 25. So how we will load it? We will load it using uh, move literal to working. So this is our third step that we are doing. Uh, move literal to working and what value? 25 uh, in decimal, so D comma 25 comma and then we have to load that value into SPBRG register. So this is our third step. Let's move to our next step. The next step is to enable serial port enable bit, which is present in the RCSTA. And why we are doing so? Because we are enabling serial port communication. Uh, remember, this is really this is present in receiver status register and control. Though we are transmitting right now, bus, but we have to enable it anyway because it will enable serial port enable, right? It will enable the serial port communication. And how one can actually do it? It's very simple. You need to write uh, move little to working. Uh, sorry. Uh, BSF bit set file and what file RCSTA this is our special function register and what pin we are interested in serial port in Apple so this is the stuff that you have to do this is related with receiver status register and control but you have to enable it in transmission as well so this is the fourth step and now you have to go to the fifth step 
So the fifth step is copy the information to be transmitted. What information we want to transmit, we have to copy that information into transmit register. Let's say uh, I want to transmit letter A uh, in ASCII uh, to trans uh, at this rate of 2400 bits per second with a crystal oscillator 4 megahertz, and I will transmit it serially in asynchronous mode. So I have to uh, put uh, letter A in transmit register. So how I will do it, I will actually uh, right, move, literal to working, ASCII, A, right, A for ASCII, and A is the letter that we want to transmit, so, and we will send it into transmit register register. So, in this way, uh, the value will be feeded into transmit register. Now, we will go to the next step. Okay, this step is very interesting. The sixth step is check the information which we have transmitted in transmitter register. Right, letter A we wanted to transmit, we move it into transmitter register. Now we want to check whether this eight bit of information, letter A is eight bit of information in ASCII, right? So whether it has transmitted or not, we have to verify it. And how we can verify it, we have to use another register. This register we are using very first time, that is PIR1. PIR1 means peripheral interrupt request register one, right? So PIR1 is registered like receiver status register, transmitter status register, right? So it is another important register, which is also part of SFR, special function registers, right? And we are interested only one bit of that register. And what is that bit? that is bit is that bit is transmit if right transmit interrupt flag right and uh, what you have to check you have to check whether it has become one or not if it has become one that means information has transmitted here i want to explain one thing more if you remember uh, we have been using transmit shift register when we were explaining transmit register actually this transmit register is just keeping the copy of which one which we want to transmit right originally it is not transmitted via this register this value will be transmitted via TX pin, but before transmission, it will actually be padded with start and stop bits and those uh, pattern or those framing will be done by TSR, transmit shift register, right? We have already discussed it. So that register will be sending this information bit by bit, right? Because this is eight bit information, uh, two bits further will be added as start and stop bit. So in total, it will become 10 bits in transmit shift register and those eight bits will be received what those eight bits will be received as uh, bit by bit right look look a transmit shift register will actually go to what uh, it, it will go to tsr right and tsr will actually add okay this is our information which is eight bit it will add one start bit another stop bit so it is now 10 bits information right so this 10 bit information will go bit by bit bit one will be transmitted, another bit will be transmitted, another bit will be transmitted, and this transmission will be happening through what? Through TX pin, right? Through this pin, TX pin, right? So while this transmission is going on, we need to verify whether that transmission is going on or not. If that transmission is successful, what is going to happen? This bit, right? What bit? Let me highlight it for you. Transmit IF bit. Transmit IF bit will become equal to one whether information will be transmitted, right, or not. So we will verify it from this bit. And this bit is present in what? PIR1 register. So we will check whether this has become one or not. And how one can check it? You simply write bit test file, skip if sad, PIR1, comma, TXR, TXIF pin, right? And you need to verify whether it has become one or not. So you will branch to ABC, and uh, let's say ABC, and ABC will be here. So what is going to happen in these two lines, right? In these two lines or in these three lines, we will be keeping continuously monitor of this uh, TXIF flag, whether it has become one. If it has become one, that means this complete procedure, what we have discussed in TSR is already happened, right? So that means our transmission is successful. So that is the uh, transmitter code. And if you want to transmit or if you want to uh, make a create a loop, what you have to do, you have to, uh, you have to create, uh, uh, you have to write a branch function, right? And you can actually, uh, you can actually repeat this procedure, right? Repeat this procedure. If you want to uh, send letter A indefinite time, 
right at this rate so you can actually repeat this procedure so you can actually use here branch to a branch to aa and you can define your level a here right i hope the transmission code is clear to you okay that's it from this lecture if you have any confusion or question please post them in comment section thank you so much for listening